Hello again, Ted Clayton here. I want to talk about death. Um, more specifically, handling death. I do not understand how some individuals, and a lot of individuals, frankly, become so, or, or can't let go of certain people once they pass. Now, what am I talking about? Um, I've seen people where when when, excuse me, I've seen people where when someone passes away, it could be five, ten years down the line and they're still posting stuff about them on social media um, and frequently too. Uh, Twitter, you know, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they bring them up in conversations. Uh, they have a lot of their memorabilia just, you know, just all over the place. And I just never understood this. And I think it's actually pretty offensive. Um, now, I want to share with you something that I read I can't I don't know the validity of this so if uh, if I'm wrong someone please correct me I was working on a a book and I believe it was a novel so that's why I say um, I can't speak on the validity of this but um, it was talking about Jewish traditions Jewish ideologies and what have you and it said that in Judaism that one is allowed to mourn one for six months, a year, something like that. But when if they mourn for them more than that, then they're actually mourning for someone else. Now, I don't know if that's a real thing. Again, it was a novel that I was working on. This is when I was editing audiobooks. But um, it makes sense. Uh... It's annoying. That's one thing. When I see it, it's kind of like, why are you always talking about this person? Like, you know, and, and it's nothing. It's, they're not really even saying anything new. It's just like, oh, I wish you were still here. And another reason why it's offensive is another reason why it's offensive. Because so there's two reasons why it's offensive, why I find it offensive. One is because. Were you, hopefully you were praising that person just as much uh, when they were living as you are in their demise, in their death. So I hope it's not a thing where it's like, now that they pass, now you're like, you're reflecting on them and then you're praising them and all that. When they were, and then when they were here, you kind of were sort of not doing that. And then the second thing is where it's, just blatantly offensive is that these people will praise people but not praise you not praise the people around them so for instance um, I have one individual who um, and they know who and just when I explain this they're going to know who they are and you can write in the comments section all you want or whatever you want I'm not going to call it it just says any videos or any kind of publication I'm not going to put anyone on blast disrespect anyone but they'll know who they are there's someone who's um, I work with them, uh, I help, um, they're an artist, and I help them with their music. Or I used to help them with their music. I don't think they want me. I don't feel like they want me to help them with their music anymore. But uh, their friend passed away, a good, a good person. And they're always like, and then this person, this artist, I consider them a good friend. I actually consider them one of my best friends. Uh, I don't, but now it seems like they consider me some, some differently. My mistake. Uh, so this individual is will, will always be posting about this friend that passed like man you know I miss you and what have you and excuse me I miss you and I wish you were still here and you know I and then they'll say things like um, you know there's just people they're not people like you anymore or around or I wish I had someone you know just, just like you that I can reach out to and it's like 
you know, yeah, this other individual who passed is a great person, but, like, I'm still here. Like, why can't you reach out to me if you're really in need or whatever? Like, what's, what's you know, what's up with that? So um, that's where it is offensive, you know. Um, and I, I won't even get to that. I'll just leave that uh, as it is. But um, I just never understood it. And, you know, when you see that, don't acknowledge it. Or, you know, if it's something that's, you know, right in front of you, just, you know, speak your mind. Tell them, like, hey, you know, just, like, let that person go or, you know, it's time to move on or um, let them rest in peace, you know. Let's kind of, you know, think about who's here now, you know. Um, Say something, but just totally just... Block, just cut that off. Just just block all that kind of energy. It's ridiculous. Um, and there could be some spiritual implications with that too because, um, again, don't quote me on this, but it could be where they're just constantly summoning that individual. You know, they're just summoning their energy, their essence. And it's, that person's probably like, bro, like, <laughs> I'm trying to like, you know finish uh complete my karma with this other stuff and i have to be in this other dimension and you keep calling me you know like let me be uh, but uh yeah i just never understood this and it's just i remember one of my uncles he had uh these flowers from my grandmother's funeral and he just had them there for like freaking like three years or something it was just this big bouquet and he just he had them there forever just like in his living room and it was just like like I mean you know (laughs) I'm trying to insert a joke but I just don't have one but um and yes it is a laughing matter because it's 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 ridiculous because it's like you know, hopefully you were. Now, I, with my uncle, I can't say too much. That's another video. I can't speak too much about the relationship between uh, him and my grandmother. I have my speculations, but that's another video. But again, it goes back to I hope you were praising her that much in, while she was here as you are in her passing. Um, but it's just ridiculous. It's just like you have this big bouquet of roses. And it's like, you know, you have kids. You had kids. It was very young at the time. Like, four or five years old. I was like, let them run around. Don't have this bouquet just blocking their way when they want to run around the house. Like, this, this is silly, you know? So that's that. And then uh, one of my other uncles passed, and I remember I was just, I was talking to him about something. He just interrupts the, com- the, the whole flow of the conversation, like, totally interjects about something. And then says, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, just remember, remember that such and such passed. And I'm like, well, thanks for the information, but I was just talking to you about, like, you know, my new job. <laughs> you know, I'm telling him, like, hey, you know, I got this new job. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm trying to figure this thing out. Like, you know, hey, give me your input on this. And he's like, well, okay, before that, remember that your Uncle Pat didn't say. You know, you could have saved that for, you know, down, the, you know, the end of the conversation maybe, you know. But we won't get into how um, idiotic some of these individuals can be. Uh, now, as far as myself, I handle death pretty, uh, I handle death in a, I handle death differently. I don't handle death like that. Um, when, I, I guess ever since I was a kid, I just understood the basic concept of of death let me raise this up it's just i'm holding this on my um on a um on a selfie stick and um my mom is just getting a little tired uh so um i don't handle death that way uh i handle it differently um i guess ever since i was a child i understood that this is a natural occurrence so it's something that logically, intellectually, I knew was coming. So that's a separate you know, a concept. And then as an individual, I always 
I show praise, I always show affection and respect to an individual while they're there. I don't think about death. I don't think about, well, I mean, in certain, certain cases, like if someone's really old, it's kind of obvious they're going to pass, or if they have, uh, there's only a few people I, I know that had, and really a handful of people who had some kind of terminal illness. But um, in cases like that, that's a little different. But then now, like most people, I'm like, you know, I expect you to be around tomorrow. Um, and, and again, I don't even think like that. It's more of just, I appreciate you, and there's not really much for me to think about. Um, it's, hey, you know, how, how are you doing? Or you know, send an email, you know, send a gift or whatever, like a post on Facebook or whatever, you know, stuff like that. I don't think about what the future may hold so much, uh, as much. So that's that. So then when a person does pass, for me, it's just kind of like, oh, wow, that sucks. Like, I literally, I just process it as just a fact. Um, well, not so much a fact, just very, not literal, just objectively, where it's just, okay, so now we got to figure out what's next. That's how I think. And the only times that I become emotional would be when I will have a flashback. And whenever I have a flashback, it's very random. You know, I can be, and I'm talking about it could happen a couple of days, a couple of months, uh, years, but um, it would just come out, come up uh, randomly. Um, for example, um, I'm trying to think of something. Uh, I want to try to be very, I want to share something, but I don't want to share too much. Um, All right, well, let's say, for example, my grandmother, right? Um, she passed away when I was 17. So whenever I have a moment where I'm going through something difficult, then I'll think of her, where it's like, man, you know, I, you know, I wish I had somebody to talk to, you know, something like that, or just like a random memory will just pop up in my head. Um, or I see someone with their grandmother. But, um, and, and I shouldn't even say that because it doesn't even happen that frequently. It literally would be more of a random memory. I can just be walking down the street and it won't even be something that triggers a memory. It would just be something that just pops up. like, And it would be the most abstract thought. Again, something that's totally disconnected from what's going on around me. It could be... Uh, I could think of like something like with my grandmother. I remember she used to always take me to this market in Bayamon, um, Puerto Rico. I used to be this market, and I, it, there'd be like there's like the sweet bread that I used to really love, and she would just like take me to that spot before we go anywhere, and because she knew I loved it, and that would just pop in my head. We we'll have absolutely no connection. No, I wouldn't get any kind of trigger. It just comes up in my head. And I'm like, oh. Damn. You know, and then it just goes away. Yeah, that's really it. Um, the way I see it is, um, one, it, that literally is just how I process it. And um, I just see them as uh, now being just a part of my essence now. They live in my memories. They live in my spirit and my heart. So that's really what it is. Like, now... I embody that individual, so that's how they live on. You know, for example, my grandmother, um, she, you know, she raised me, and um, I learned a lot from her. So now the way I conduct myself kind of emulates her a little bit. So, and so that's her living. That's her uh, continuing in this life, you know. Um, that's how, uh, that, you get what I'm saying. Um, that to me is me keeping her essence alive. Um, and that's how that person does stay alive, you know, in your spirit, in your essence, in your heart, not any external things. Um, not in constantly talking about them. It's through you. 